Okay, so we're playing as white here um, versus the 2000 pluses and basically just opening nice and safe, just going with usual E4 nice and steady. Wasn't going to go with the feeling Chetto this time, I was feeling a little bit, um, what's the word now, really up for a, a kind of strong positional type of game. I thought, well, just stick with my basics and see how we do. Because the Fianchetto thing is like, well, let's sit and wait and see what they do type thing, which is what usually the 2000 pluses do. Um, again, yes, don't shoot me down, but you probably will do. But on, on the whole, they kind of just sit back and wait for other people to actually attack them. And I'm like thinking, well, I'm going to take this fight to the 2000 plus here and see how we get on with our basic answer process. So we capture as usual, nothing out of the ordinary here. And we develop the knight. Um, whoops. When we're just dancing around, we bring the knight out here, you know, looking to kind of support the pawn. And if they do capture, then we capture the knight back type thing. In this one here, I'm saying, take it. I've already got my pawn. Now I can develop a piece. Opening up my king so that I can get castled. Whereas this way, it's a little bit slower because I'm developing on the other side of the board. So we push through the center, opening up the dark square bishop. Space around here, also trying to manage these key squares here, keeping it real simple, dirt simple. So they develop the knight, they're attacking the pawn at this minute in time. It doesn't have a 2 on 1 on the pawn, so I'm not going to lose too much sleep over that. So we bring the bishop through now, x-raying through to the knight, so the knight really at this moment isn't able to capture the pawn if this knight decides to move or do something a little bit fancy because they've got the support with the queen. But then we've still got two pieces on there, our queen and the knight. So they bring the bishop through, at this point here, I did think, well, is this the smallest the smallest of losses in tempo in terms of developing their pieces and actually getting their bishop out and making space for the bishop so that they can castle kingside? Or are they interested in castling on the queen side? But if they are interested in castling on the queen side, it's going to take a few moves because the bishops blocked the queen and um, before the queen can actually get over to the queen side so that's why i kind of said to myself i think that might be a momentary loss in tempo in terms of developing the pieces so now we've got a smaller piece that can attack a higher piece now that we know that there's congestion here around the king there's no activity there they're going to have to spend a bit of time trying to um get their king to safety that loss in tempo looks really quite major to me now so we can afford to attack his knight where does the knight go i mean it can't go there i suppose it can come here it can go here but it's if it goes there it gets taken so it brings it over to the other side of the board so that's like maybe too tempy down now in my head i'm thinking okay maybe we can make something of this they're already in reverse mode so a smaller piece attacking a higher piece yet again so just constantly attacking them with these um, small attacks basically I mean the first pawn move attacking a higher piece second pawn move attacking a higher piece so it's almost a little bit unsettling but it did feel really quite fierce I felt really fierce and focused because it was that simple and trying to gain some type of advantage because of the major blockages for his own king's safety so the knight went back to where it came again losing more tempi in terms of developing as we mentioned so fingers crossed we're trying to keep that pressure on as best possible feeling really fierce so we captured and then they captured back so it doesn't look too bad for them now, you know, they've got time to basically get the, the pieces out. So we can castle now, so we've done our bit in terms of 
establishing maybe 310p up in terms of developing our pieces and hopefully swinging through attacking the key areas towards the king area so they push through looking for the fianchetto and as i always kind of say the fianchetto is like a it's really slow it's it's not it's not a progressive dynamic attacking situation it's almost like saying well i'm i'm capitulating whilst you develop your pieces so i can just bring my king to safety and you know win some sort of tempi that way it's not aggressive it's not really giving me something to think about um yes i'm thinking obviously if he does come here he's got a diagonal through and he's going to be attacking our rook etc so i'm not negating that fact but i'm really on the positive side of the fact that it is slow and it's not dynamic as far as i could see so we brought our bishop through now so basically looking to attack this pawn but also maybe fashioning the attack through to here so that then we've got a diag diagonal through to their rook what is wrong with my arrows today yeah a diagonal through to their rook all depends on what the opponent's going to do though um, because we could be pushing this pawn here supporting this pawn as it's pushing up as well so they go for the fianchetto again under fire not realistically realizing that they're kind of potentially under fire i mean the king is looking to go on castle um there are probably about four tempi down in my own head um, um there's no rule or law to say that they are tempi down so now we bring the queen across looking to basically tantalize the bishop a little bit that's all pretty straightforward the knight comes down and attacks so from an unsure footing of not having king safety and the queen is still jammed in at the minute it's not really got any play his knight is jammed in really it's not really in the game bishop's really not in the game I and mean, it's looking for this pawn here and it's looking for this rook here but no pieces are working together um, but they come out with a single attack onto our queen so for me i'm thinking that's probably a loss of five temp important key tempi in terms of developing pieces and really getting advantage in the game we bring our queen back because obviously he's looking to actually tantalize this um, pawn here so that's a nice safe safe position for us we're still feeling fierce but we're being faced with fierce with our defense because as we've mentioned in the recent videos um, prevention is better than cure you've got to manage your blind spots as well yes he has an attack but it's slow and it's an individual attack it's not pieces working together and then this pawn move comes down I did not I thought okay then they're definitely not going kingside castling so they're going to fashion trying to get queenside castling their poor king is still stuck in the middle of the board and it's really going to start being a home alone a little bit so we now can challenge his knight because his knight's got no protection on it i'm envisaging the pawn dropping here to protect which is weakening his king space even more and not developing his king so i'm hoping that they push this pawn to the um, to um, protect but they bring the other knight to protect the knight so it opens up space for their queen but it does not protect the king the king is still it's getting more and more home alone because it's stood there with no safety barriers whatsoever so we can grab this knight because this knight then is going to be further away from his king so he's then going to be basically almost home alone just guarded by the queen and it's just stuck in the center of the board so they do capture so now the queen can come up start attacking the knight which is unprotected and as we said if we see this type of situation it's definitely weakening the kingside area they're going to be contemplating the potential for going queenside castling and um, because their pieces genuinely aren't developing as a team uh, in this instance 
very mindful obviously the bishop coming through and attacking here so we're going to have to watch for that but why not attack a piece that doesn't have any protection so the knight moves again we're probably up seven minute tempi which are major in terms of the opponent getting developed they've come back they're attacking the pawn here but the queen is protecting but so it's gone back to be safe so it's blocked his queen again no development of the king no development of the rooks so seven tempi is quite a lot to be down we then want to fashion how do we develop from here because we haven't done anything major the opponent has done all of the work for us we push these pawns up onto the knight smaller piece attacking the higher piece so they're highly developed up the board so they're managing some nice key squares at the moment our pieces are developed feeling fairly comfortable that they're working as a team because this bishop can actually attack his bishop if need be just to see if we want to get it off the board rooks are now linked up so we're feeling fairly favorable you know i mean could drop here could drop here you know opposite the king type thing because they haven't castled yet are they considering castling what are the options so we look to get the bishop off the board just giving them something to think about <clears throat> uh, constantly every move almost feeling like well yes i'm feeling quite fierce in this game i don't really want them to get any tempi back so like i said probably about seven up so if we can keep that tempi up and keep giving them something to think about then we may get further advantages in the game so they do actually capture and we capture back so the queen's now trying to get into the game but obviously that movement is looking for them going queenside castling so in essence we are in my head i'm definitely thinking oh we we are about eight tempi up we have potential again to harass the knight with a smaller piece we have potential for owning this square with the rook we've got potential for backing up the queen getting a nice line going towards the king area so we bring the rook facing the king first of all because obviously if they go queen's high castling there's potential for doubling up as well on this file there's also the option of attacking the knight as well so they do queenside castle there's also options of going here but then we do lose a pawn if we do do that so we bring the rook through now it's actually facing the queen and we do like actually the rooks facing off the queen just in case things kick off especially if we start pushing the pawn here knight disappears then there's only a few pieces in front of the queen and then they start pushing this pawn here this must have been the ninth tempi up that i felt in my head um, because there was no major threats towards us and the position of their pieces still genuinely wasn't working together maybe potentially looking for some type of um, dirty tactic type situation to sit the queen coming across here so we pushed on to the knight with the pawn as we mentioned um, if it starts kicking off and we can get the knight out of the way maybe we can squish the queen but there's a whole heap of combinations that can happen if we can get this pawn pushed up or if we get to lean onto this pawn here open up space around the king there's a whole heap of small tiny minute um maneuvers to gain even more tempi this pawn move again is like tempi number 10. so the tempis are building up in the game it doesn't look like anything major on here i mean the gauge i'm looking at the gauge bar and i'm not going yes that's all well and good my personal gauge bar um was there or thereabouts the same and it was just those small wins in tempo moves to kind of make the opponent feel like maybe they're being suffocated but we still have to watch our blind spots just to make sure there's no um sneaky dirty tactic type things that can creep in so the knight actually moves so it's moved to a square where it can actually attack our knight and we can take the knight off the board now because we're te 10 tempi up which is quite awesome we do have these elevated pawns up here 
So if the queen takes, then we've got quite a few options of pressing onto the queen with a smaller piece yet again. So the queen does take. So the options are, do we keep pushing forward? Do we push forward with this pawn? Do we actually go for an exchange with the queen because our position's favorable? Do we go for this pawn, which was no longer protected now by the queen? So options, and positionally, this one felt a little bit better, the rook taking the pawn, because there's the element of maybe getting the other rook behind and maybe going for some sort of back rank situation. Even the queen getting the queen up there as well, trying to get that around onto the back. So we actually grabbed the pawn here. So 11, 11 tempi up is really major. That is really major in my book. But you still have to box clever because he's still got major pieces on the board. It's just that currently they're not actually working together. So we're trying to take advantage of that as best possible. This rook move... Uh, well, in our mantra, we say the rooks don't have any place in the center of the board unless it's to your advantage, you know, so it's not like an impossibility, but we do try and stay away from it. Um, I know I mentioned in one of my videos, one of my favorite players, um, they, la they actually like having the rooks in the center. I'm like going, no, <laughs> but no, I do like their play, so um, they're allowed to get away with that. So the rook coming down obviously kind of weakens their kind of structure, but we have to be careful because it's like got like a two on one uh, on the pawn. So what do we do about this? We have to think carefully. Do we support the? Do we support it with the queen or something like that, and just let this pawn get taken? Um, do you know? There's there's things that we could potentially do, or do we just ignore that and just bring the rook here? You know, but our focal point is on trying to really get some sort of squish towards his king area. So we decide to push up the pawn to elevate it a bit further. In fact, it's no longer part of the threat. And there is some key elements here, either capturing or just pushing the pawn up, which is putting pressure towards his rook, putting pressure towards his king. And it's also freeing itself from being attacked taking itself out of the equation so this pawn move here this did actually shock me this pawn move because i thought oh you know i didn't even put that in my mental rolodex i'm there thinking oh i might just take this pawn off the, take this pawn off the board and gain some advantage but i think it made it worse for them when i sat back and forth i think it made it worse for them because the, there is potential for putting the check on the king um we're still babysitting this pawn at the moment, but this little pawn here seems a little bit ferocious at the minute. We decided to put a check on the king. Now this was a little squishy move. Because we can still come back and take this pawn. But it is checks first, isn't it? Position first, checks first. So there's so many options, you know, being able to take this or put a check on whichever we chose to take. So the king moved. And I did realize when I did that move that there isn't really a full checkmate back rank thing because his queen is protecting this pawn. We bring the queen up. Looking to maybe at some stage fashion, fashion maybe the rook coming here, but we have to be mindful of any back rank type stuff because he does have his rook here. So we're still looking to get play up here, but we obviously can't take because the queen will take, queen takes, and that's not a good exchange for us. But we still have the element of pushing here, but not while the queen's there because the king will just take the rook. So the queen greedy munched the pawn. That did surprise me actually because it's taken itself off of a t um, uh, uh, defending here. But maybe they believed obviously they can come back again and win the tempo and defend the area. So we bring the queen up looking to try and get the squish. Then they bring their rook back. But then 
we realised that's a quite a nifty move because the queen actually going here is still protecting this pawn so we're not going to get an ultimate squish but we could get some type of squish so we go with the check on the king king moves over into the corner so it's checks first, it's position first, checks first uh, so I can then think about what I want to do next can't do this because obviously the king will just take the pawn yeah the rook sorry so we bring the rook down and I like this invisible move because the queen is on the pawn here at this moment but there's an invis invisible checkmate type situation which is here the queen actually coming onto the king so I really felt quite pleased with that move it felt really fierce I'm putting so much pressure on these areas but what I do know is it can be easily defended so once the rook does come here I don't have to take I can push this pawn I can mobilize the queen I can take the pawn so I'm not the one that's under pressure per se because the rook is protecting here if by any chance the queen comes down and attacks the rook then we do have the safe haven if we do take the pawn we can come down and protect the rook because we have the diagonal onto here so that's the kind of picture that we envisaged looking at the blind spots of the position yes it felt good if they didn't see it but what if they do see it because it is easily defended so what can we do from there we can gather more material getting ready for the eventual end game if it goes that far so they did see it so it was like damn it you know strong defense so we grabbed the pawn like we mentioned okay safe haven being here because when you whenever you've got your rooks and they're not um, sort of like linked together it's always quite wise to see where if there's any pins or anything like that and that's a nice little pin for the queen so it's a pretty obvious um, pin so pretty straightforward to be able to defend so long as we worked it out in advance so that's, that was like our free move advance calculation so they did actually come down with this one because that was, that's, that's a strong move it's a strong attack if I forget myself then he's just coming down and it's like checkmate so we bring the queen down defending so he does capture so we take with the pawn because obviously if we take with the queen um, he just takes it for free basically yeah. and at this point the opponent resigned and it could have continued on but yeah felt really fierce this was like a a fear i've not done a fierce game for a long time um i think it might have been about seven or eight mo um, games ago where I, I did like a crushing game but that wasn't fierce that was just like a crushing game because the opponent just left openings left right and center this one felt like every move i was making was really minutely a fierce attack that made the opponent do something it's a strong player so making them do things that they don't want to do is really quite powerful in terms of developing our own attacking formation it's not saying I was doing the best moves because the gauge bar was going up and down but I have my defensible rationale for each of those positions that we were going for and the key thing I think was the, the catalyst, the starter for it all was these smaller pieces attacking these higher pieces which are the pawns attacking the knights which gave us a massive winning tempo because the opponent couldn't develop the pieces well they didn't develop their pieces so it's really being mindful the pawns are quite deadly if you allow them to attack your higher pieces because you're then basically having to move that piece losing tempi and as we said we got to about 11 tempi up 
in terms of developing our pieces which allowed us to get a little bit more favorable position on the board so the takeaway from this definitely is around having a look at your opening and just making sure that you're not actually let's just break this down so the captured that's fine so everything's hunky-dory there so the, then developing this knight maybe was probably not the right thing to do okay so you know that a smaller piece can attack your higher piece so do you not just take this back as a starter for 10 you might think you're losing tempi but uh, probably best losing tempi on your terms so that then you know okay yes i've moved it back okay and then i've got time to if i then i've got nothing else to attack now so i have to develop my piece so i'll develop here and then you can start developing nice and steadily easy as pie you know those little tiny things are the things that make or break strong players yeah and it also really and can help develop them the smallest of detail try and avoid putting your piece where in a place where a smaller piece can actually attack it that's the takeaway from today